Now just before we start lesson five, a little comment on the guitar. Because this instrument here and this instrument there are two of the most common instruments in the world. And the reason why they're so popular is partly because they are harmonic instruments. That you can make multiple notes at the same time which are satisfying. As opposed to wind instruments uh, where you can only play one note at a time. So that goes back to lesson two where we were talking about harmony versus melody. So it's really easy to make a broad, satisfying sound with an instrument like a guitar or a piano. But on a guitar, you can have up to six notes ringing at the same time. And on a piano, you can have up to ten. Yeah? Or you can have more on a piano if you have two people playing. So I just want you to think about that. Another great instrument to learn, apart from the piano, is a guitar because they're everywhere. Great instrument to learn. A little bit harder to get sounding good as opposed to a piano because you need some technical skill to make uh, the guitar sound well, whereas the piano, you just press it and it's totally perfect. Anyway, something to think about. So, what are we learning today in lesson five? Well, we are learning how to read notes on the musical staff, because in lesson four, we learned what the notes look like. You learned about a quaver, a crotchet, a minim, and a semi-breathe. You also learn what happens if you put a dot beside those notes. You add half that note's value again. So now that you know that when you see a note, what it looks like, that that represents how long your finger holds it down on the piano, we're going to teach you about the musical staff. Now, the musical staff looks like this. It's five lines. And in the musical staff, you can have either a treble clef, or a bass clef. Now, we're going to start with the treble clef. So here's a treble clef. Now, notes can be written, the notes that you've learned, they can be written either on the line or in between the space. And this is really important to differentiate because where it is on that line or on that space is representative of where it is on the piano. So, you know what the note looks like, you know how long your finger holds it down for. Now you know where that note is on those lines, or in that space, and you know what that is relevant to the piano. And that's it. That Once you know that, you're reading music. Let's get into this treble clef. So, we've got two universal poems that nearly everyone knows and they use to learn the treble clef. They're alright, a bit boring, whatever, we're going to make up our own for the bass clef, but let's learn the ones that everybody knows, because they may already be somewhere in your field of knowledge. So, to remember the notes that are on the line for the treble clef, we have a poem which is, Every good boy deserves fruit. Or Ferraris, or freaks, or fruit bats, or whatever you want it to be. So, every good boy deserves fruit. Yeah, that's on the line. So, every E, good G, boy, B, deserves D, fruit, F. What does that mean relevant to the piano? Well, the E for every is the E that's just up from middle C. Every, and then we go to the next G, good, boy, deserves fruit. So that's what that means. Now, if you were to hold all those notes down, you'd see that there are four left in between. And those are the notes that are in the space. And they happen to spell a word. In the space spells face. So if you remember face, F-A-C-E, and that is the F starting above middle C, going to the A to the C to the E. If you remember face in the space, and every good boy deserves fruit on the line, boom, you can read the treble clef. Now the treble clef, is going to mostly be played with your right hand and it represents from middle C and above. So, let's just quickly go over the treble clef before we get to the bass clef. So, in the treble clef we have two poems that help us remember where the notes are because notes can be written in the space and on the line. A treble clef is that big squiggly thing. This is a treble clef. Draw it a couple of times if you want. Um, Treble clef, treble clef, treble clef. What does it represent? It represents the right hand, the notes above middle C, the treble. So, what are our two poems? Hopefully you told me it was every good boy deserves fruit and face. Face being in the space 
every good boy deserves fruit, E, G, B, D, F, being on the line. So I'd like you to pause the video here and in your notebook, because I hope you are keeping a notebook, it really will help. I want you to draw a treble clef staff, draw a treble clef, and then write that in, in the space, write F, A, C, E, in the space is space, and at the end, where the lines end, draw E, G, B, D, F, every good boy deserves fruit. Write that in, and then press play again once you've done that. Nice, you've done that. All right, cool, so we're up to our bass clef. So in our bass clef, there are some other boring ones, but I want you to make up your own because you'll remember these poems if you keep playing music for the rest of your life. So we might as well make up a good one. Now, why don't you draw, why don't you pause it now and draw a treble clef? No, did I say a treble clef? A bass clef. I want you to draw a bass clef, draw a bass clef. Okay, so we've drawn a bass clef, so now, now that we've drawn a bass clef, we're going to start making our poems. We've got in the space and on the line. In the space, we've got A, C, E, G. On the piano, that's here. A, C, E, G. In the space. So, here's our job. We know what notes they are, we know they're in the space. We're going to make up our own poem that'll help us remember them. So A, first thing that comes to your mind, anything, A, could be a person, a place, a country. Um, some people like to use it as A, uh, and then they go to the C, which is next, but think of a person, a place, a country, a thing. Uh, it could be a describing word. A could be a describing word for the next note, for the C. Pause it until you get a good one. All right, you got a good one. So now we're going on to C. You know, I'm thinking of a million of these, but I don't want to put any ideas in your head. So, this C has got to be something that flows on. Make it as ridiculous as you want, but make it sort of uh, all stick in, in some sort of theme, okay? So you've got A, you've got angry. C, you've got uh, cooks, angry cooks. But don't use that, you've got to use your one. So anything, or, or it could be angry Camilla, angry, um, Angry Caesar, whatever. Think about something with C. You've got an A and a C. Or it could be Agile Caesar. Uh, or it could be Aliens Cook. Um, okay, A, C. Pause it till you get a good one for C. Good, you've done that. Now we're going on to E. What's our word for E? Could be a lot of words because E has a lot of words. Now, have you got a good one? It's got to be good. Make it funky. Next one, G. Find me a good word that ends with G so you have an acrostic poem, A, C, E, G, that's going to stick in your head. I had a good one the other day from a student who did Aliens Cook Ecstasy Good. That's a good one. That creates a really strong image in your head. You're going to remember that, okay? I want you to have a good one like that that sticks in your head. All right. If you haven't got it, or you want to fine tune it, pause the video now so you get a really good one, okay? Because now we're going on to the bass clef on the line. We're going to read the notes on the line. So on the line, we have G, B, D, F, A. I want you to, on your bass clef that you've drawn, go through and, and write in G, B, D, F, A. And uh, now let's go back to the G, once you've done that. All right, we've done that, but we're going to start at the G. Again, person, place, thing, describing word for the next note, which is a B. Let's find it. Now you go into a D, F, A, etc. You know what? To, you know how to do this now. Just, just pause the video and make me a really great acrostic poem for those letters. This is to memorize your bass clef notes on the line. Make it funky, make it visual, make an image in your head that's going to stick with you. An example of one a kid made the other day, which is pretty funny. Grandpa burns dresses for Anzac Day. That's pretty weird. But it's going to stick in his head. Anzac Day in Australia is our day we remember our soldiers. So, Grandpa burns dresses for Anzac Day. Okay, make something that's going to stick in your head. Okay, good. So, we've done that. We've done face and every good boy deserves fruit on the treble clef. You've made up two poems for In the Space and On the Line for the bass clef. 
and you now know that those notes you learned in lesson four sit on one of those lines or spaces and now you know where they are on the piano. Because here's the final piece I want, I want to put into play. You got your treble clef up top. You have your bass clef down the bottom. And these are later on when you're playing um, two hands together, these will be written on top of each other. So you'll have the treble clef and the bass clef and your notes will be written in both. Your left hand will be playing notes in the bass clef. Your treble clef uh, will be for your right hand. In between the lowest line on the treble clef and the top line on the bass clef, there's three notes. Middle C is in the middle. From middle C you go up to D. And after that you're on the E of every good boy deserves fruit. So you have middle C, D, and then the E for every good boy deserves fruit. You're already onto your palms. Underneath the middle C you've got a B, because the middle C is always on a line. You've got a B, and then you're up to the last A, the last line, in your bass clef palms. Does that make sense? So, just remember, you now know your treble clef palms, you know your bass clef palms, and in between the top line of your bass clef and the bottom line of your treble clef, there's three notes, a B, a C, and a D. Boom, that'll take you from this G all the way up to this F. And so many of your songs are gonna be written in that range. If you have notes which are higher or lower than that, They'll just add a line at the top, but you are not going to get there for a long time. And here's another thing I'd like to say as well. I don't just advocate playing music by reading music. I think it's a really good tool to learn because it doesn't take long. You practice this a few times, you do a little bit of sight reading, you're going to learn how to read music well. And then you can use it to learn a lot from other people's songs, because that's the language you use to learn how another person's played. But you don't have to, you can learn music by ear. Uh, by understanding chords and keys and, and using your musical ear. So it's definitely not the only way to play music. Uh, this is just one way. And there's so, so much of music is communicated this way, it's a good thing to learn. It's just a little bit of your time and then boom, you can download any sheet music for any song you want to learn. It's all on the internet and you can learn it. So I want you to study those things. Maybe stick them up somewhere above your piano. Stick up your treble clef and your bass clef. The two new poems you made for the bass clef, the two poems everyone knows, every good boy deserves fruit and face for the treble clef, remembering that in between there are three notes, middle C, B and D, and I want you to start thinking about that relevant to the piano. So point to the F, A, C, E, point to the A in that, in your treble clef poem, and find where is that A, because you know where middle C is underneath that E, so you can count up. That's the A in face, yeah? Oh, and there's the F in face. That's the C from face. That's the E from face. Where's the E that's every? Every. A game I like to play with some of my students is we lie a rope on, on the ground, like five lines. You pretend that's a staff, and you say, where's G? And you gotta jump to it. You know, that's just little exercises like this. Uh, train yourself in where it is, because when you're sight reading, you wanna just look at it, go, boom, that's a B, and that's the every good boy, that's the the boy B, yeah? Or you want to go to your palms for the bass clef. Memorize your bass clef palms, and then in the next lesson, we're gonna apply lesson four and five to Lean On Me. So we've learned Lean On Me by ear. Now we've learned how to read music. We are going to play Lean On Me reading the music. So you'll know that, oh, this note's a crotchet, that's a minim. And now you'll know, oh, it's on this line, so that's that note. Bang, we've just learnt music. Thank you.